All right, boys, time to get back to work on the Bug Eye Zuma. We got plans to hear this thing run this video, so run or ride, one of the two, hopefully both. Um, but we got some parts for it. Um, as you saw last time, we kind of stripped it down and got kind of surprised by some, some of the smaller issues we ran into. So tonight, I'm pretty much going to go in and kind of button everything up. I also have some OEM parts, so I have an OEM front fender because this front fender was snapped off down there. So we got an OEM front fender. A new fuel line because the fuel line in there is just old and crusty and full of motor oil. We got ourselves a uh, brand new Trail Tech temp gauge because this bike doesn't even have a temp gauge um, and it's a bore kit on it too. So it's always scary running no temp gauge on a on a built motor. You're messing with tuning and stuff, so a lot of variables. But this is a Trail Tech temp gauge, but it has a backlit sensor. So now it, you have to run to the battery, obviously, or 12 volts switch on and uh, it'll be backlit now, which is super sick. I can run it not backlit if I don't want to, but uh, yeah. And then I have a new key ignition on the way. I was hoping that new key ignition would show up today, but it hasn't yet. So uh, we're still on wait for the OEM key ignition for this bad boy. Oh, and then we got ourselves an OEM CDI box because he has some cheapy Chinese CDI box, which literally is just exposed. All right, first things first, let's get rid of this uh, CDI box. Go ahead and throw the front fender on too, because it just looks so bad without it. So much better with the front fender. All right, because I'm curious, super curious, we gotta uh, pop open this side case and look. Look at what the CBT setup is in this. Oh, wow, okay. Stock clutch though. Oh, look at this belt, man. That's some serious bite, dude. That belt is all the way out. I'm gonna pull this off and see if it's shimmed or not. But. I wonder what jets this guy's running. 105, that's actually uh, probably what I would start with too, so probably gonna keep that. All right, got the pretty much just the carb body, everything taken apart out of the carb. Gonna clean pretty much everything, carb cleaner and then uh, put it all back together. For the pilot, we were running uh, a 38, which is pretty perfect, too. All right, new fuel line going in right now. Got to kind of copy the same layout, put another shutoff valve in there, because this one's too hard to reach. So you kind of leave that one on, and then you got to use this one. So kind of run new fuel line right now. We got the carb in there right now. The all kibbles all hooked up. So I should be able to put fuel in it, put fuel in it, and we should be able to see if we can make this thing fire. Let's see how this plug is looking, boys. Ooh. Man. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, should I put in the temp gauge right now? No, I need an extension for the temp gauge, because my temp gauge doesn't have an extension piece. But I don't want to have to worry about doing it right now twice. So then I'm gonna cut this and then run the like the plug in and just have it hanging for now, like so. So I took the crush washer out and I'll just let this part hang until I get my extension for it. My first time ever having this happen. This thing, usually these come off with your hand. After further investigation, I've learned that these plugs don't have removable tips for your spark plug cap. These are I don't know what the hell these are. Some knockoff NGK plugs, I think, or something. Let's see if this get the spark. No spark.
Well, boys, the bug eye runs, but it doesn't do as much good right now because this throttle cable is definitely giving us the issue. So, um, would suck. Pull this out, and uh, this won't go in anymore. This nut, because it has like a space right there. But if I was to pull this nut off and then put all the throttle cable back together, I think I can make it work because it's just a little too short. It's just barely picking up the carb right there. So when I start it, it's nasty, bro. And also, this pipe is terrible, dude. This thing sounds like almost like what a two-stroke sounds like when you don't have an exhaust on. It's so loud. But uh, it's like the bike's revving up right now, so. not even leaking out the head. I thought, I literally thought that there was like a full on exhaust leak with how loud that pipe is. But no, it's that's literally just how loud the pipe is. That's full exhaust noise. Hey, Leo Vince, ZX, um, Bug Eye pipe. If you want a loud pipe, that's for sale. Pipe's gotta go. Um, I need a new throttle cable. That throttle cable's just not gonna work. It's from my GP1, and on the GP1, it has dual throttle cable oil pump situation, whatever. So there's like this little box that midway, where you usually have an adjuster, is like this box that like transfers the cable to a Y cable right there. It lacks that part of the adjustment, which makes it too tight, and um, the rear half of the throttle cable is too tight, AKA, not gonna work. AKA, need to order a throttle cable before we even ride this thing, because it's max sketch how it's stuck like that, so. What you Zuma boys know about this right here, huh? That completely OEM padded Yamaha luggage crate on the back, paint matched to the 1990 piece. Dude, that thing is massive. I wish this seat was in good condition. I'm still on the hunt for this seat. I know it's a, it's a shot in the dark, but if anybody has an OEM Yamaha 1990 seat with the gray two-tone to match this, now this seat is slimmer. It's not as like the regular pre-bug right here. This big fat one. Notice how fat that one is. This one's a lot slimmer. It only came on this year, I'm pretty sure, 1990. So if anyone has that, let me know. But uh, yeah, this thing's so mint, dude. I kind of want to get the seat cover and <laughs> actually put that luggage rack on and keep this thing all OEM, bro. This is so, so mint. 350 miles. I think that if I remember right, reading something crazy on these one day about certain ones being certain years made in Japan. I don't know, you're gonna have to go back and look at the history on this. But this being a fender with the Japanese on it, lettering, this bike is actually made in Japan, whereas the other ones were made in Taiwan, I wanna say? I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I just know after a certain year, they uh, started making the Zumas somewhere else, whereas this one was definitely made in Japan. Someone hit me up to buy this and they offered me $1,500 and I turned it down for stock Zuma just because, I don't know, bro, I don't really want to get rid of this thing. But I mean, man, this is the first bike that I ever got that was so mint where I was like, I don't want to do anything to it. Never had that before. So, I mean, this one, look at this whole back panel was cracked off right there. I mean, it's all scratched up. This panel's broken. All these panels, dude. And everybody who's commented to like use sticker remover to get this off or like goo gone or something like that, it does not work, bro. This sticker is like, in the paint. Yeah, but for now, it's time. I gotta do some more Banshee work. In the last video, we went and tested the Banshee. Leak down's looking uh, mint in the Banshee, I must say. <laughs> Quick five and a half PSI. A little less. But as you can tell, needle's not moving. It's holding there and there. That's good. Um, so, we know that the Banshee's not leaking, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and run it. So, uh, gonna go ahead and throw all the pipes back on right now. Clean the carbs while they're off. I need to clean it just from sitting, so. Uh, it's got fresh plugs in it already, too. Just went and grabbed all this for the bug eye right now, so I got a Polini adjustable clutch. Melosi wing bell, I have three of these right now. So almost every one of my Zumas is gonna have one of these. Um, a Yusuni R pipe, and uh, these carbon 
mirrors, which of course I feel like only can go on the derby because we got carbon right here on the derby. So I was thinking of these ones, and I kind of like these GP1 mirrors though. So maybe I'll put those on the Zuma. Where did the Zuma go? Boom. Yeah. Anyways, I'm about to put the Banshee back together. We got the pretty Paul Turner pipes chilling right there, and uh, about to throw this bad boy back together. All right, Banshee's back together. I really didn't film much of it last night, putting the pipes on everything like that, but everything went pretty smooth, and uh, she's all back together now. Fender's back on. She's ice cold. Just turn the fuel on. Ice cold. You can put your freaking tongue to this. No chokes, baby. This is seriously, this bike is running so good right now. Um, I think the right carb was, oh, I still got it in gear. I think the right carb was uh, pretty damn dirty. It was pretty clogged up, so. Should be right there. Man, I'm ready for that, bro. I cannot wait to rip this thing to do it. Also, my buddy just dropped off this LTZ 400. Alright, boys. Well, we're gonna wrap it up with the bug eye right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw on the pipe since I already showed you guys how I got that. Yeah, I might as well throw on this pipe and see what it sounds like right now. But hoping this one's a little bit quieter. I'm hoping this, the packing and the silencer is decent. Ryuk wants it. Bro, are the grasshoppers back? Oh. No. <laughs> oh, just no. Hey, he ate him. Yeah, I just didn't want to make the cable get pulled out. Oh yeah. I forgot about the throttle fold. Way better. It's high idle because the throttle cable is too short. Got the full paddle headset. Hold on, I need to turn that off. <laughs> it feels good? <laughs> That red bike's fast, so... I know it's kind of keeping up with the purple S. Yep. My back tire is really low on this right now. It feels a little sketch, not gonna lie. But I haven't really the S in a while. This tire is so flat. Oh, it's like flat, flat. It like rolls, oh, like folds. That thing looks so sick. I'm glad Chuck can pop it up so I can see what that looks like. That thing looks so sick. I haven't even rode that thing more than just the one time outside my neighborhood. Cole rode it the other night when we went and then Chuck's riding it tonight.
This thing's even slower because I'm on it because I weigh more. So you guys are like way faster. <laughs> That car just cut, cut. Wow. Oh, it just cut coal off so bad. Oh, man. All right, boys. That's going to do it for this video. We put the Yusuni on. We tried it out. It sounded way better than the Leo pipe. I'm stoked. It still had really high idle the throttle situation, but... That's going to do it for this one. Leave a like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.